Yeah, so, I, I saw that. This is that. That's the the ape. The uh, what the? That can't be real. That's got to be satire. There's no way. I, that can't be real. Yeah, I didn't look into it at all. But for the listeners, we're looking at a a tweet that says, "As many of as many of you know, my wife tragically passed away last year. To honor her." Deranged crypto ape have produced this Sarah Oxford law law degree memorial NFT and you can win one. And then it has what you do to win. And then the actual NFT is a, uh, an ape with like, you know, like kind of like a BDSM, like, uh, I don't know what you call that hat, you know, like, uh, gimp hat, gimp hat. Yeah. And then like, he's winking into the camera as he fucks another ape of, a female ape with like a big red, you know, dark burgundy hairdo on the Magna Carta for some reason. There's no explanation for this. It's completely tasteless. I really like it. <laughs> why? Why isn't the woman ever winking at the camera knowingly? The woman, the, the guy female like, ape should wink at the camera as well. They should both be in on fucking on the Magna Carta. Yeah, yeah. It's not a surprise to her. She know she actually has a better view of the Magna Carta. She's hunched over the Magna Carta. <laughs> Why the Magna Carta? What is the? I don't the know. I relevance? don't know, Phil. What does it have to do with anything? <laughs> That's the only reason I can possibly believe this is real because there has to be some reason. But I mean, I I agree. I hope that it's satire because uh, it's just too hard to believe. But like, this is like coming from someone Oliver at Sarah Oxford. I don't know how to say her last name. I apologize. Oxford Law Law Degree is what I'm guessing. Um, but it's just very strange because I'm like, is this, this is like a memorial fund that this guy is tweeting from? Like, I don't know. I can't understand what's going on with the, the, I can't believe NFTs are still a thing, much less that this would be real, you know, like, please don't commemorate me in this way. <laughs> you if got I pass it. Are you sure? Yeah, please don't. absolutely will Mom. not. Thank you. I appreciate it. I might. But please commemorate me Matt. in this way. <laughs> I want to be over the Magna Carta or something of that nature. Like, uh, sorry. Getting fucked by a monkey? Yeah. I'll yeah. draw that myself. Going to town. That? Yeah. You got it, bud. Could you actually, as a throwback, not have it be a monkey, but have it be a fish with like uh, legs that have fishnet uh, stockings oh, on? Oh, yeah. I still need to get that tattoo. If you could, you know, draw me getting just railed in a sundress <laughs> by that fish, that would be amazing. <laughs> you got it, bud. <laughs> Absolutely. Your family will be very confused and concerned, but yeah. I'll just I'll just play this episode for them and they'll understand. <laughs> Well, there's a lot going on right now. Let's start with this because you two were there in, I shouldn't say the epicenter, but close enough. I guess there was an earthquake in New Jersey, basically, <clears throat> yep. but it could be felt all the way out to New York City. And this is just one of the many signs that, and we'll circle back to this because I want to talk about the earthquake, but many signs of the impending apocalypse. Uh, tell us about your experience. Have you had, have either of you lived through an earthquake before? I have not. So, yeah, I, I grew up in Guam and they, well, like as when I was a kid, I, I lived in Guam and we had like a lot of them and they were kind of fun for me just because like <clears throat> Guam <laughs> itself is just kind of like built with like just knowing that they're going to have earthquakes. So like our house was like one story, it was like clo close to the ground. And then, you know, I was usually outside like playing with salamanders or whatever I was doing. So nice. I was just like, it was a good time for me, but yeah, I haven't had, I haven't been through an earthquake since I was like seven. So like when it hit, I was like literally on a business call and they're like, what's the, what's the time, uh, time period that you'll be able to have this done. And then it started happening and I'm just like, um, by early next week. And I just oh felt like super awkward about it. <laughs> Amazing effect to shake the camera for us like that. I really appreciate it. It was literally happening on the call and like no one said anything. So. <laughs> did you tell them like after it had occurred like uh i think there was an earthquake or you just went on with your i, I just went on with the call was... <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because i I, the... I was like I, I was in the other room i was working from home that day uh and i just like i thought that there was a garbage truck driving by because that was like my only fair reference i've never been i've never had a uh i've never been 
present for a, a earthquake ever in my life. Mm. I'm like a lifelong East Coaster. I really haven't been anywhere where, that, where like earthquakes are common, especially like or like not ones that you could like feel really. Like I know New Jersey apparently. Like I looked it up, and apparently like New Jersey's on a fault technically, but the but their the frequency uh, while they're not uncommon, they're almost they're all so small that most people small, don't yeah. feel them. Or like if they do, it's like very minus that you almost wouldn't you would attribute it to something else, right? This yeah, one was like a big one. P about it who lives in New Jersey, and he was. I was like, "Does this ever happen?" Oh, he's like, "Yeah, actually, it happens a lot. Just not like he named uh, within the last ten years, one had happened." And I was like, "Oh, okay." But I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. There, there was another one. Yeah, there was like, and it was always a running joke. I, I don't, I don't, I maybe I think it was in like twenty, I, I don't know, like twenty fourteen or sixteen or something like that. There was like a, or maybe twenty. I don't remember. Maybe a little later than that. But there was one, and it was like really small. But it was like enough that people did feel it, and people were like. Uh, like, oh, where were you when the New Jersey earthquake took place and like making fun of like how it was nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I just didn't know. I had no, I've never felt anything like that in my life. And it and it was freaky as hell. Like I genuinely was like alarmed by it because it was like, there's this like deep rumble that was like happening. And then the mm. whole building was like shaking, which I've, I mean, it's obviously it was a fuck earthquake, but I've never been in a, in a building that was shaking from the ground before. So yeah, I walked cute. over and I and I like look over. I was like, Did you, "Is that a fucking earthquake?" earthquake. And then yeah, she's like, like on a call. And she just looks at me. She's like, <laughs> she's like shaking her head violently and looking at me like like she can't talk. But she's like, "Is like yeah, that was fucking that weird." That was absolutely an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I mean, I guess that's not really the right word for it, but still. I mean, there's uh, no. Da- I mean, there's no one. No one got hurt, but there was. I did see some. Um, like cracks in the road. I, I I didn't see any here, but I, I saw pictures of in New Jersey. People had like apparently the sh- it, the ground had shook enough that the pavement actually cracked, but it was like really thin. It didn't inhibit anything. Hmm. Wow. Well, I can relate because the foundation of my home seems to be like slowly sinking into the ground, and uh, it's nothing near like an earthquake. But I'm like constantly my. So on top of that, the winds in Colorado this weekend have been like hurricane level like 100 mile per hour winds for some reason. Like there was supposed to be a Dom Dalla show. I don't know Dom Dalla, uh, but they had a show booked at the Red Rocks Amphitheater near Denver. It's just like yeah. right outside. And they had to cancel it because of how intense the winds were. And so uh, to wrap the story up, I think there's something going on with my foundation, but the winds are so strong. You know, if you ever hear your house like knocking and, and you know, like yeah. you just hear things shifting, it's like, that happens here like constantly. It's just like, like all the time. I'm just like, oh, my house is gonna. Fall. Not not just now. Like it just happens all the time throughout the year. All the time, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, they try to ascribe that stuff to just like the seasonal, like the temperature changes, but I don't know. I mean, it just happened. It it's happened intensely, like all day, all the time. So, well, what is uh, what, what makes you think your uh, foundation is sinking? Like, is there something that you feel it? Um, that's hard to say. I mean, like when the house got loud, when it started having a lot of that, like, I guess, what do they call it? Like I I said, knocking, I think there's another word for it, but just like, like a certain amount of it is obviously just normal, right? Like it's just going to happen. Your house moves, it settles. Mm -hmm. But, uh, this was happening like, like constantly, like at least every hour I would hear like loud movement in the, the interior of my house, you know, like the joists and stuff rubbing against each other. And I'm like, this is not normal. So like I start walking around the house, looking at the foundation, you know, and I've found Mm -hmm. like lots of cracks. And in fact, there's like an egress window, which is like when you have a basement, uh, you can't consider a room like a bedroom for, for like realty purposes. Like if you were going to sell your house and say, Oh, it's a four bedroom house. Mm -hmm. If it's a basement house, it has to have one of these egress windows. Like, so that means they have to dig out the, the dirt around the house and install a window. And then it has to have the little like safety ladder to come up out of it. Mm -hmm. And you can look down the side of where one of these was installed in my house. And there's just a crack that just goes like straight all the way up and down this side of this. Uh, Did you get anybody to look at it yet or uh, not yet? Yeah. We've had one person come out and look at it and I, you know, it's just depressing to even consider (laughs) doing what they would, uh, what they recommend. So, I mean, uh, I think this was a very sales heavy company that came out and looked at everything. 
but they do use what's called like a zip leveler. So they go around your whole house and they, they find the highest point and then they see how much the rest of it's sinking. And it's like a difference of like an inch, you know, like on the back of my house. So I don't actually know. I like, I'm waiting on another uh, structural engineer guy to come out that like doesn't do any work repairing this kind of shit. He just tells you. He would just, yeah, give me like an unbiased opinion. So anyway, right. not an earthquake, but <laughs> hey, uh, I'm glad I'm glad for that. I think if we had an earthquake here, my house could just slide down the hill off into the. No, no I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in Florida all the time. It's it, all these places that I've lived have like just prepared me for all of the. Horrible yeah, yeah there's the sinkholes. Yeah, like sinkholes houses would just Florida. cars would just like sink into the ground. Yeah, I saw from researching this, I saw a lot of houses were just like they'll do what's called peering where they like they 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 dig into your foundation and attach these piers that like they will send pipe down to the bedrock. So where however mm -hmm. deep it is, you know, five, ten, twenty, thirty feet. So mm -hmm. your house will essentially end up being supported by the bedrock, however deep it is. And then I would see pictures where all the dirt that was left would just be like eroded away and they would just be sitting on these piers in Florida. No. That's yeah. why I brought it up. I'm just like, damn, I don't even want to. <laughs> oh, Florida, man. Think about that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But so we have earthquakes, which mm -hmm. is just one omen of the coming apocalypse. Because mm -hmm. coming by the time people hear this, which will be early on Tuesday, we will have had a full solar eclipse in, in the U.S. A total eclipse of the sun will be mm -hmm. occurring all across this certain band from Texas up to parts of New England, crossing mm -hmm. uh, Arkansas, I think maybe Kentucky. Apparently upstate New York is like the best, one of the best places you can see it. Are you going to go? No, it would, that'd be like a six hour drive. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. I hear New York and I think it's all like, uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a huge no, fucking city. Hours, no. can, can you see it at all from New York City? Do you know? I, mean, I don't know. With the lights and, and everything. I'm not sure. I really Honestly, I don't know. I, th I don't think. So. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up. I don't think we're in the line of, um, of like it being a total eclipse. Matt, when you posted about the earthquake, didn't some didn't some loony bin say something about like the, the rivers flowing with blood and or something <laughs> in your comments? Uh, I don't know if they were like a complete nut job, but they, they were just saying how there was like an eclipse, really and then oh, there was like uh, oh, and they were telling. I forget, but there, yeah, there was like somebody was like trying to link up all the conspiracy shit, and you know, yes, exactly. Uh, so it's not even close to New York City. The closest looks like Buffalo, New York. You would have to go like yeah, that was clear, six hours clear up. across the state. But um, yeah, like I, I just wanted to bring this up because everyone is being extremely normal about this <laughs> eclipse, and there's definitely not anything, uh, <laughs> not any stranger, you know, um disturbing behavior related to this at all in fact everyone's just kind of like yeah that's neat and can't wait to experience that uh no actually there's lots of uh there's i like there's religious shit going on where people think they're going to be raptured tomorrow like people literally being like yeah i'm going to be floating to heaven uh during the eclipse um, and then uh, speaking of conspiracies there's weird shit where people are taking the conspiracy uh, well, they're creating a, a conspiracy about the eclipse with this uh, path of totality and then the one that happened in 2017, which like apparently happened in in uh, like in a way that intersects and like makes an X. And they're like human sacrifices are going to begin in <laughs> Ohio in the place where the two eclipses <laughs> intersect in Ohio. I, think I love where, that. If I remember correctly. Yeah. I, mean, I love that. They think anything is happening in Ohio. <laughs> Like that's where that's where the that's where the fucking demon worshiping elite are gonna go. They're gonna be like, okay, guys, we gotta go to we gotta go to Columbus. We're taking a trip to Columbus. <laughs> We're gonna sacrifice humans, kids. Yeah, but we gotta be there. We got it's it's totally inconsequential, but we gotta go there. You know, that's where the <laughs> Satan wants us to do this. And... <laughs> Satan, Satan would choose Ohio. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. Terrible place. I like to think that they're like really excited in whatever town they chose that this is going to draw up so much so much business. Like the economy, oh. the local economy is going to be uh, booming. just booming because Dude, of it uh, is absolutely happening. Have you seen? There's like a thing going around 
uh, a map of it shows it's like some kind of weird data uh, aggregator for Airbnb. And it shows where all the uh, Airbnbs are sold out right now. And it's just literally follows the path of totality. Like everyone has just like booked up. Like I, my babysitter who comes once a week for us is like not available earlier this week. Cause she's taking a trip to uh, where did she go? I think she is, she's either in Arkansas or like Indiana somewhere where she's like smack dab in the middle of it. But people are just, she like, wants to see it all. Yeah. Okay. I mean that, that, I mean, I don't know. It, it, hap- it doesn't happen often. And if you have free time, why not fucking do it? I guess Yeah. it'd be a good excuse to like, if I, if I, mm-hmm. uh, weren't going to be taken off, uh, for this wedding, uh, I'm going to, I would probably drive up to Rochester or Buffalo. Why not? A yeah. good excuse to go up there. But she, uh, I bet you the uh, hotels are expensive as hell. In all yeah, these I'm mean, sure they're exploiting the shit out of it. Like, yeah. I, oh yeah, everyone wants to be here. Like, jack those prices up like cr- crazy. My sister-in-law lives in Little Rock, and she was describing what it's like the climate there because it's not really in the path of totality, but it's extremely close. And uh, like, she, I can't, I, I can't remember how she described it, but it was <clears> she was like something between the pandemic and like a music festival, like the climate of having all these. <laughs> coming to your town to just like experience this thing you know like they're here for two or three days possibly <laughs> but uh i've never experienced i mean i've been like i've i think i'm trying to remember i could see one recently uh in the past few years close enough that like you know i could look out my window and be like oh yeah it's dark here you know because of the fucking eclipse mm-hmm. but um i read a description of some guys like a viral post about being in a total eclipse and how like extremely eerie it is. And just like, uh, unlike any other experience you'll have on earth. I mean, this dude went on and on about how he had traveled the entire world and how like nothing he had ever experienced had been like being in a hundred percent total eclipse of the sun because like everything just stops. Like the animals in the area start acting weird and the shadows and everything change. I mean, even not being in a total eclipse, like when there is an eclipse, if you look, you know, at the shadows, you'll see the fucking moon, you know, like it's like the shadows of everything take on a different shape because they're like this, the, the sun is blocked by the moon. So you'll see all these little circles everywhere. It should be just be like shadows of leaves, but no, they're like fucking circles because so creepy. Yeah, it's insane, you know, and I don't I don't understand. I've never been in an experience like this to understand what this guy's getting at, like that it's that magical. But I can I could imagine that, you know, like it's got to be weird, man. It's imagine be being strange. like imagine being like a Bronze Age farmer and seeing this shit. You absolutely had to think that uh, God hated you or, and that you, <laughs> yeah. you, you did something to piss him off. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's even an account I've seen going around, which I didn't verify, so listeners can tell me if I'm wrong or right. Uh, but uh, it was about like a BC, maybe 400 BC, you know, like Mesopotamian battle where the the eclipse happened in the midst of this, and the civilizations like fucking just stopped fighting because it was so fucking creepy. <laughs> And apparently, I mean, again, I don't know if this is true or not. It doesn't sound true now that I'm saying it, but like <laughs> that they worked out peace because this eclipse happened during their battle for like, they had like the first peace in however long for like a five year period of like peace of non fighting. So, I mean, yeah, if you didn't know any better, it would seem like God was disagreeing. Imagining you're just gooning like crazy and you're, <laughs> and you're thinking, I'm going to ride this one out for a good long sesh. And then all of a sudden the sun blacks out and you're like, fuck. <laughs> I just looked it up and apparently it was indeed true. Nice. Hmm. Hell yeah. I mean, I think it's, (laughs) I can't imagine many experiences in life to be like that. If you have no clue about what's going to happen, you know, like it's different. We're talking about it because a thousand people have researched it and reported on it. And we know exactly where it's going to be happening. But if you just happen to be chilling wherever the sun just got blacked out entirely (laughs) for, for a good 30 minutes or however long, like, yeah, you'd be fucking tripping, like. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even. I, I kind of am intrigued by this battle now, which I'm going to obsessively read about after this mm. call. But the, but the, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, apparently they j- they did in fact uh, just stop fighting. But I, that kind of makes sense, though. If you're like, if you're like in the midst of a battle and this happens, 
you know, maybe both sides like, hey, okay, hey, we don't know which God we pissed off. We don't know what's going on here. Let's just back away slowly. <laughs> Let's just call it a truce. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah, I get it. Totally. Well, I guess, I mean, I don't really have much else to say about that. Uh, I do hope lots of people get raptured because good for them if that's what they want. <laughs> yep. uh, happy for you. And also glad you don't, I don't have to fuck with you anymore. Like you're gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't you can just you. enjoy the planet. Um, lots of people. Oh, there was one. Other, lots of people have been joking about how that show Heroes that came out on NBC. I don't know, 10 or 15 or more years ago is about. It was like NBC's trying to do superheroes like on a mainstream primetime television show but they Mm -hmm. just like the the thing of it was that they were always kind of like teasing like kind of always like leading up to being superheroes but they never really delivered on it uh but the whole premise of that show was that for some reason the eclipse gave people Mm. superpowers and so that's why when you see the logo the o in heroes is an eclipse of the Um. sun and so lots of people were like if i get my powers on monday like (laughs) you 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 know (laughs) It's like the lottery meme where like if I win the lottery, I won't tell anybody, but there will be signs. Like <laughs> the eclipse gives me, you know, Mr. Fantastic powers, then I'm not telling anybody. But if my dick taps you on the shoulder, like and I'm over there across the room. <laughs> I was always right. like intrigued by the whole like X Men thing where like you could just randomly get powers and like from a mutation. Cause I always yeah. like I always like that just because I like the X Men growing up, but also just the horror of that where it's just like you could get a really cool power. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you have a slim chance to even get powers at all. And then if you do, it could be life ruining yeah. debilitating power that allows you to never be able to touch another human being again, or you become well, like a toad man. That's, yeah. I, I liked toad. He was one of my favorite X-Men. I always like toad. Yeah. I like toad. Cool powers too, um, actually. Yeah, honestly. Uh, but it was like the opening uh, of the boys that spinoff show. Oh, where, v. like and yeah, it turned Generation out to, V. Yeah, it turned out to not be a great show that we didn't finish. But the opening of it, she gains her powers on the day that she gets her period and accidentally kills her entire family. Yep, because she yeah. can control her blood. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah, just like yeah. shit like that. Like, imagine that you're just like total accident. This person, do you have just like a nice family, and then you just kill your entire family because your powers awaken and you can't. There control you go. Yeah. I like that. I hope that happens. Have y'all? <laughs> this is uh, random, but have y'all watched any of the new X Men? Uh, I guess it's not technically a reboot, but it's like 95. a continuation. Blows my mind. I have yeah, not. Ninety seven. X Men yeah. ninety seven. It's. Yeah, have you it's watched good. it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, that cartoon was good, and I did watch a, 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 a like two episodes a couple years ago, and just because it was like I loved that show, it was like one of my favorite shows, and it like kind of held up. It was like pretty good for a '90s action cartoon. So I don't, I don't know. know. I I actually went back to rewatch it, and it was kind of hard for me. I'm like, <laughs> was it really? Did you think it was really bad? I mean, it just starts good and it gets worse as time goes on. Like, if you try to get all, there's five seasons of it. That's why it's like oh, X-Men okay. 97 is it started. In I may have watched the first two episodes. Five years go by, like the studios change and the voice actors change and all this shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, at the heart of it, I agree with you. And it's actually what, what's what been really cool about this n- new version of it is like they brought back as many voice actors as they could. But they also like do very deep dives into like x-men comics which is great to see like like it's a very like uh you know like a what am i trying to say like an abridged version of what you would see in a comic book but like they definitely like try to touch you know they're like this this scene is literally like an homage to a panel in the comic book and like Ah. that's you've seen i've seen that like dozens of times now where they'll be like this scene like side by side with a, a page from a comic um and characters that pulled out of like you know like there's like a future version of jubilee because you know jubilee is one of the youngest x-men but there's like one version of her from an alternate universe it's like 60 something years old and she she shows up and a bunch of stuff like that like a bunch of and it's only like three or four episodes in so far so i'm hopeful that i think it's i think it's a good thing i mean like 
I try, I try to go back and watch the old show, and it's just hard for it to hold my attention because it's just like it's like it's a kids so- show. Very obviously, that's a that's a problem with those things where it's like I don't have like I liked it when I was a kid, and I watched like the two episodes, and I was like nostalgic about it and being like, oh, this reminds me. But it wasn't something like, oh, now I'm intrigued. I'm like, no, it's a it's a fucking children's show. Well, and I think I the themes are actually surprisingly. I think maybe the way that it's executed, kids don't really understand the themes but like the themes are surprisingly adult Mm -hmm. but like the execution of it is so campy and cheesy that like every line that's delivered is like i will do this thing and i'll have my hands on my hips while i (laughs) you know just like and i will give them credit they like that definitely carries through in the new show you and you have to just kind of be like yeah this is how this is supposed to be like Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. supposed to be like extremely camp you know everything's supposed to be corny like you just have to know that that's the case but uh i don't know man like all those shows had a major impression on me like that's the only reason i ever cared about comic books is because the x-men show the batman show um uh kind of me too animated series like those just had a a, i would watch that shit after school the batman animated series was amazing show Uh, and then saturday mornings x-men gargoyles uh, I loved Gargoyles. Gargoyles oh, is so underrated. That show is so fucking good. I, I really like that. Do you, do you guys remember Mummies Alive? God, yeah, I do, but not like very well. <laughs> it was like a real, like, it was like a C tier. B or C tier, like, and I just remember watching it like a, a lot of times and it being like, me even as a kid being like, this is terrible. But I uh, st- continued to watch Mummies. it because I was a child. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Biker Mice from Mars. Oh, wow. I remember Biker Mice from Mars. That was like a kid's book before that, too. I think, I think uh, it was. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. Have, I just was. Uh, I just watched the fucking show. Mommy's Did you ever watch like, that? One of the first CGI like animated shows called Reboot. Oh, Wars? I loved Reboot, dude. Really? I, I like love Reboot. Nice. reboot. Yeah, I will. I religiously yeah. watch Reboot. I I'm loved so it. glad that y'all both know that show and watched it. because That was like it, one yeah. of my favorite shows. Canadian, by the way. Interesting. Yeah. Canadian. Yeah. That was one of my first shows I ever experienced, like a narrative time jump that was like. So, yes. Like, like that was, it was jarring as a child, yeah. but intriguing and didn't take away from it at all. It just was like cartoons didn't do that. It yeah. was just like the same thing over and over again. And then it was like, oh, my God, this character is like a new character. Like, what happened to the uh, what happened to Bob? Like, where's Bob? Right. <laughs> is he dead? <laughs> So there's a there's a documentary in the works right now. I follow this page. It's it's reboot. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't remember what it's called. Reboot something where they're going and they're interviewing all these creators and people behind it. And the people that are doing this documentary also got access to all these original tapes um, for the show, which is crazy because you wouldn't think this, but you can't really watch that show in the fidelity that it was originally made and put out in it's just like it was it's just like lost in time like if you (laughs) i need to invite y'all to the group to explain it in depth but like these people have gone crazy trying to have like if you want to re if you want to watch reboot today in 2024 like Mm -hmm. there's just not like a very good version of it that exists Mm -hmm. uh but these documentarians like not only are they making a documentary about them making it i think in their in their hopes is that if they can drum up enough interest that they'll get a continuation of the show like because i think it did leave off on a cliffhanger like i mean it would be very interesting to see them bring that back with all the advancements that have taken place since that i mean this that predates smartphones it predates ai obviously uh but ai was a big part of the show right yeah yeah it was a kind of a sci-fi you know more or less like a fan a fantasy sci-fi i don't know really cool show though very very uh fascinating and just like the and 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 such a cool concept where like they're in a pc and the guy plays video games and i that was that was very because i played video games on my computer on my computer and for me that was like a very like a tangible thing Mm -hmm. to be like there's little people that live in my computer and they play the the video games against me yeah yeah i feel (laughs) you like that's kind of horrific when you think about it that like 
every time you win your game, you're actually just killing little like, you know, <laughs> yeah. cognizant people that live inside your your motherboard of your, you know, computer or game system or whatever. You're just like, yes, I'm fucking you're just having the best experience of your life. Meanwhile, it's genocide <laughs> inside of your <laughs> But it's but th- that was the funny thing about reboot is that it was I, I can't even know if I remember a time where the user won the game. Like I don't know if the user f- just fucking sucked or <laughs> I, I don't remember for the life of me. I do remember that they pulled that they did pull that mermaid out of the yeah yeah. I can't remember of, her name. But she was game. like a main character that like she was for a little while. Yeah. Well, like when Enzo no, she... becomes like the main character yeah, 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 through the yes. time jump, she's uh, his like. Boo, right yeah 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 yes so she was she was important now. when she came and then they don't ever explain how that works <laughs> no they <laughs> never did they don't explain how that works i remember but. it being a big deal though being like oh my god this never happened yeah yeah reboot everyone if you haven't seen it go check it out how many people remember reboot though i feel i'm always surprised because i remember like in my mind i was like oh because i didn't none of my friends really watched reboot i loved reboot and there was like but then I like go online and I'm like, oh no, this is actually like a beloved show that like has a huge fan base that people remember uh, extremely fondly. Yes. So yes, totally agree. Bring I back reboot. Fuck we're, it, we're, I don't care. We're due for a resurgence. If you're interested in it, then you know now's the time to. Yeah, if we're, we're and anybody on this podcast will do voice work for free. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, because that's what they need is people to come voice. Act. <laughs> they don't so have. We, they don't have enough of those, back. right? <laughs> all right well i think that's all we got in the hopper for this episode thanks everyone for tuning in join the facebook group the discord and if you like the show enough that you want to hear more join our bonus our bonus stream on patreon and spotify until next time we'll see you next week Bye. see you guys Bye.